The reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 9 and chapter 11. Christ's birth and future kingdom, foretold by the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. They lived in a land of shadows, but now light is shining on them. You have given them great joy, Lord. You have made them happy. They rejoice in what you have done, as people rejoice when they harvest grain or when they divide captured wealth. For you have broken the yoke that burdened them and the rod that beat their shoulders. You have defeated the nation that oppressed and exploited your people, just as you defeated the army of Midian long ago. A child is born to us, a son is given to us, and he will be our ruler. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. His royal power will continue to grow. His kingdom will always be at peace. He will rule as King David's successor, basing his power on right and justice from now until the end of time. The Lord Almighty is determined to do all this. The royal line of David is like a tree that has been cut down. But just as new branches sprout from a stump, so a new king will arise from among David's descendants. The Spirit of the Lord will give him wisdom and the knowledge and skill to rule his people. He will know the Lord's will and honour him and find pleasure in obeying him. He will not judge by appearance or hearsay. He will judge the poor fairly and defend the rights of the helpless. At his command, the people will be punished and evil persons will die. He will rule his people with justice and integrity. Wolves and sheep will live together in peace and leopards will lie down with young goats. Calves and lion cubs will feed together and little children will take care of them. Cows and birds will eat together and their calves and cubs will lie down in peace. Lions will eat straw as cattle do. Even a baby will not be harmed if it plays near a poisonous snake. On Zion, God's sacred hill, there will be nothing harmful or evil. The land will be as full of knowledge of the Lord as the seas are full of water. I really enjoy going camping and going to festivals and uh, over the years I've learned how important a torch is at these things because when you come back at the end of the night you're faced with a field full of hundreds of tents that all look the same and thousands of guy ropes at hundreds of different angles all waiting to trip you up and this is where the torch comes into its own you see it lights the path it pushes back the darkness so that you can meander your way through the guy ropes and find the way back to your own tent. And there's a powerful parallel between that and our world today. In our world today, it's filled with so many dark places and all sorts of terrible and distressing things. Things that seek to bring us down or lead us astray. Now in our reading from the prophet Isaiah, we, read, we heard about how God intended to bring a light that would bring shine into the world and drive back the darkness. Now, in the Christmas story, we see that that light was Jesus, God's own son. And in the Christmas story, we read about how Jesus came into a world of darkness, but he didn't succumb to the darkness. His light overcame it, and through him, God established a new kingdom that would not fail. And at Christmas, we are invited to walk with Jesus in his light, the light that overcomes the darkness.